Hello, this is Truth Seeker and another video for you to watch. Uh, I know it's a bit lengthy, uh, but this is uh, a special video that takes a look at Watchtower statistics. Now, this is something that um, we won't have the luxury of being able to do in the future, uh, because Watchtower has announced that it will no longer be releasing uh, a yearbook. Uh, Watchtower has been releasing yearbooks since 1927. And so this is a pretty momentous uh, event uh, by terminating um, a, its release of the annual yearbook. And um, with that... Uh, yearbook um, are the annual statistics and they list uh, these statistics by country and then uh, totalize them. Now this day this uh, video just looks at the totalized data from a global sense. Um, there is a huge amount of data uh, when you look at it from a country by country perspective and to upload all that data from the past uh, 70 or 80 years uh, would be a monumental event, um, a monumental task. And so I, um, I uh, went to JW Facts, uh, I went to the historical data section and uh, even then, there was quite a bit of work uh, getting that data from a PDF format into my Excel spreadsheet because uh, it doesn't just copy and paste uh, nicely uh, and neatly. Uh, so um, unless somebody knows a better trick than I do, uh, it, it took me a little bit of time to get the data into a spreadsheet. And then uh, there was some data that was missing. I didn't go online to other sources to see if there was uh, additional data around to fill in uh, the gaps. Uh, I just stayed with uh, JW Facts. Um, I do a lot of statistical analysis uh, in my work. Um, that is a large part of what I've done and what I've been doing over the last uh, 30 years. I deal with a lot of data and uh, do a lot of data analysis. And so I'm used to looking at numbers. And uh, when something looks uh, funny, uh, I can tell. And uh, there are statistical techniques uh, that that can be done that uh, suggests that uh, maybe the data isn't um, copacetic. Um, most uh, powerful of all are scatter plots. Uh, scatter plots are a very important tool in uh, both data analysis and interpret interpreting data, as well as identifying a uh, fault with uh, data, and we will uh, do both in this video. So um, if you're not technically inclined, uh, you may still want to watch. I try to keep this as elementary uh, level as possible, although some of the terminology and maybe some of the methods uh, that uh, I refer to you might not be uh, familiar with, uh, but these are standard uh, uh, statistical techniques that I've used. And um, I um, have had uh, quite a few uh, mathematical courses um, that deal with uh, data. For example, um, I, I've had uh, both uh, undergraduate and graduate level statistics. Uh, I have... Um, had uh, uh, courses like hydrology that is all statistically based um, and uh, deal with techniques like data synthesis uh, where data is missing. And I did uh, synthesize a few data points, not many, uh, but a handful of data points in this uh, data set. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. 
um, because uh, there there are so few points uh, that uh, it really didn't make any any difference in the uh, ultimate analysis that we that we've done. So anyway. Um, with this introduction, uh, this is a lengthy video. I am um, thinking about breaking it up into two, except that you do lose the continuity. Uh, I do, at the very end, and you may want to skip to it, I do an analysis of what the potential uh, financial liabilities uh, Watchtower may be facing as a result of the child sex abuse scandal. And uh, you're aware of the $4,000 a day uh, violation that they're paying for um, contempt of court and, and failing to turn over a list of uh, 23 or close to 24,000 uh, pedophiles uh, that Watchtower is keeping uh, uh, to themselves. They're not making public. They're, they're not turning it over to the, the court. Uh, right now, they've accrued over $2 million in fines. Um, I think Watchtower is sitting on a major financial powder keg with this uh, sex abuse scandal. Um, and I think that they're in deeper doo-doo than the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church, they're still paying the price for it. They're not, they're not out of it yet either. Uh, but um, they have a billion people. They've been around for two thousand years, and they've got um, uh, so many uh, assets uh, that they could liquidate. Uh, then that uh, you know, I think the Catholic Church is is going to to be able to weather their uh, their um, their scandal, um, and at the same time, they uh, though they had to learn it the hard way, uh, they did learn their lesson, and they are being more transparent and more cooperative with the authorities with regard to handling uh, uh, the sex abuse uh, uh, cases. Um, Watchtower has not learned that lesson yet. They're trying containment. Uh, they're reluctant to um, to um, um, change their policies, uh, ridiculous, archaic um, policies that, that are all Bible interpretation. I don't know what consultants and what legal advice they're getting, uh, but they're not. They're either ignoring it or it's just really, really bad legal advice. But they are sitting on a, not a powder keg, but on an H-bomb uh, that is ticking, and it's ready to go off. Um, you judge for yourself. I'm just, what I do is I just take a look at the numbers and see what the potential is in terms of the financial liabilities that Watchtower could pay. Uh, for this sex abuse scandal. So that happens at the end of this video. If you're more interested in that, you can go ahead and skip to that section. But I believe all of it is interesting uh, because um, the statistical analysis uh, shows uh, where uh, Watchtower may be uh, uh, fudging the data uh, to their advantage. Uh, uh, I've been able to model uh, their uh, their growth, and also um, where the uh, where the data suggests that um, that their uh, witness work has uh, has really failed them. Uh, so uh, I explain it uh, in the uh, in the video. Um, it's uh, I don't uh, deal with uh, a lot of mathematics. It's uh, basically scatter plots and taking a look at how the data spreads, um, you know, out on a scatter plot over time, or you know how different data relate to one another. So I hope you enjoy this uh, video. I know it's long. I apologize for that, uh, but there was just so much in that data, and I could have gone on uh, for a greater period of time. 
Uh, but um, I, I, I tried to keep it as short as I could, uh, but I just uh, kept finding uh, more things that, that really needed to be talked about. I didn't even get to the uh, uh, box and, and whisker uh, analysis that I did on some of the data, which indicates that the data doesn't distribute normally, uh, which is something that you would expect of data. Uh, that is uh, random and and uh, um, from uh, you know an honest uh, sampling, and uh, you know so there there are various ways in which uh, you can uh, invalidate the data that uh, Watchtower um, is throwing out. I, I think that they're I think they're they're hiding the real the real situation. So. That, with the child sex abuse scandal, I think is a major concern uh, for Watchtower. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this uh, video. Uh, and, um, you know, skip through if you find it, uh, you know, you don't care for mathematics. Um, you know, I don't blame you. I, I like it but not everybody is like me. So this is a long introduction and I'm just going to get right into it. So um, again, thanks to Paul Grundy who made all of this data available for everybody to be able to look at themselves. So anyway, this is uh, Truth Seeker saying, um, I hope you enjoy what, what, uh, what, it, uh, the presentation that follows. Okay. <clears throat> Today we're going to try and take a look at uh, Watchtower data and try to get through this as quickly as possible <clears throat> without spending a tremendous amount of time. Now, the other day, I, I watched a, a video, and the I think it was on the John Cedars channel. <clears throat> and the discussion was between um, Lloyd Evans and uh, somebody who was uh, representing the I think it was the Mormons. Uh, I could be wrong about the particular video, but anyway, the statement was said that, um, you know, they were comparing um, how many reported uh, members are in each organization. And... <clears throat> I, I forget what the number is for Mormons. Um, that's easily obtainable. Uh, the number reported for um, Jehovah's Witnesses is 8,248,000. I think it was uh, 14 million uh, in the... Um, in the in the Mormons. I would uh, I would have to um check that out and i think that can be easily done uh if we go to google and mormons let's just keep it simple yeah, look at that. I was pretty good. Uh, 14.8 million um, Mormons. And I don't know if that counts the, the fundamental uh, group, which is relatively small compared to the, the main church. Um, I think this just uh, counts the, uh, the main church. But um, now... JW Facts has all of, well, not all of the data, but a, a substantial amount of historic data on 
Jehovah's Witnesses. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's in a PDF format. And that's the format in which Jehovah's Witnesses uh, themselves present the data in their yearbooks. And over the years, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, have been printing yearbooks um, since 1927. Um, and in those yearbooks, uh, increasingly uh, through the decades, uh, they uh, began to add uh, new data. Now, uh, this was in an attempt to mimic uh, the reports that um, are um, reported by corporations, um, corporations every year, um, even private corporations um, publish uh, an annual book, and uh, they um, they give the uh, financial data uh, in their book, which is something that um, that uh, Watchtower doesn't do. But uh, uh, for example, this is a, a global corporation. Uh, with 94,000 um, employees globally. Uh, they report in uh, francs, Swiss, Swiss francs, and uh, they report their financials, as well as other information that, um, that uh, is to entice, uh, the, the purpose is to entice uh, investors uh, to uh, invest in the in the company. Now, even though this is a private company, they do sell stock, and uh, the stock does uh, go up and down. Um, they also uh, report other things: uh, their community engagement, integrity in business, corporate governance, uh, health and safety, where they talk about. Um, their, uh, their, all the good things that they do uh, in terms of um, providing environmental health and safety um, protection to the environment. And, and this is done, this is typically done under a certain set of rules that is uh, set by the um, federal government or the uh, governments of uh, European countries uh, and uh, I know the SEC uh, Securities and Exchange Commission uh, they require uh, <clears throat> reports to be made uh, so that it accurately reflects the financial data and other data and companies will get uh, higher uh, auditors uh, like uh, Price Waterhouse to take a look at uh, their data gathering systems uh, to validate the data. And uh, so uh, they're making an accurate report to the public. Now, the Watchtower, they try to mimic uh, something like that. Uh, since 1927, uh, they've reported on their work, and um, which is uh, to send out the message of the kingdom. <clears throat> the uh, annual report was something that was uh, Judge Rutherford's idea. They began um, publishing it in 1927. Uh, 1927 covered the year 1926. And now we are 80, 90 years past that time. And, um, and it, it was recently announced that uh, the Watchtower will no longer publish 
uh, their annual report. Now, it remains to be seen whether or not the statistics that they've touted over the years um, will be reported on their website or that they will be terminated altogether. And if they're terminated altogether, then we will have no more a uh, glimpse uh, inside the corporation uh, at all. Uh, they will just, uh, whatever, I mean, to tell you the truth, we there's, there's not much transparency with Watchtower to begin with, um, but at least there was the statistics, uh, even though the statistics uh, can be, considered suspect. And uh, I, I decided to take a look at this um, data that they report to see if there is any anything that stands out, anything that um, might mark the data as um, having been tampered with, um, uh, how much trust you can put in into the data, and and there's several several uh, ways of doing so. There, when you look at data, and you look at data that is that that is untampered, um, and is for example, um, if you're in a room of 500 people and you um, you take a uh, sample of 100 people uh, to measure, let's say, their height or their weight, uh, you will find that um, that, that sample uh, will reflect um, or pretty well reflect the distribution of weights for the, the whole group. You, you know, you don't have to necessarily uh, sample. And, well, for example, uh, many, my, many of the statistics that we, uh, that we use today for quality control and production uh, came from the Guinness uh, uh, Beer Factory, um, the student's tea. Uh, and rather than open up every single bottle and and taste test it to see if the if the beer batch was good um, they they uh, grab uh, random samples from the production line and from that random group of samples they can extrapolate um, uh, the let's say the the quality uh, to the greater whole to all of the production and there is there are these mathematical techniques statistical techniques that allow them to do that using distributions and uh, how how um, uh, uh, certain things distribute naturally um, like human weight or human height and <clears throat> the the now in the in the case of uh watchtower it's um the the statistics um are centered or focused on the growth of the organization you know how successful are people in converting into the organization and uh, so that that is the, the that that is the focus of the of the data and uh, like I said I got the data off of JW facts uh, I spent a lot of time doing it I wasn't able to quickly find um, data in an Excel file um, already so I, I just took the time to go to JW Facts and, and, and put the data into a spreadsheet. 
Now, I also, uh, this is the data here that you see. I have it highlighted in orange. And you can see that some of this data is uh, red uh, in the table. That is uh, synthesized data. That's, um, now, I, I've, um, I've had uh, statistical, uh, graduate level statistical courses. I've also taken uh, courses in uh, hydrology, which use uh, uh, certain uh, statistical methodologies, um, interpolating data, and they call it uh, synthesizing data and, and using information uh, from other data sources to, uh, you know, if you have certain relationships between uh, data uh, you can uh, you can synthesize um, a missing data point, for example, and that's what I did here. There were some missing data points. <clears throat> I'm still struggling with my voice uh, from the cold, so I apologize for that. Uh, but uh, I highlighted the data that um, that. Um, that uh, was missing and that I in I, I think in this case I, I did some interpolation uh, to synthesize some of this data but that's actually that's a legitimate technique as long as you don't have a lot of data I mean I wouldn't uh, for example here uh, down down in this uh, corner I would not try uh, and extrapolate um, that data because, um, or synthesize that data because uh, there's just too much missing. So I, I'm going to be using uh, that data up. And uh, also you may notice uh, that I have, the, the data that uh, was on JWFAX started with 2017 and then went backwards. Um, it doesn't show the time progression. Uh, it goes backwards in time. So I, I actually um, I had to flip that data around in other sheets. And uh, one of the things that you're really looking for in, in data is, uh, is, it, is when, you're, when, you're taking, when you're taking statistics, and, 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 and polling, okay? Um, and that's basically what, uh, what um, Watchtower is doing when they, they collect the data from their, uh, and in fact, I'm not even sure uh, how they collect the data, but they get it from each of the kingdom halls. Uh, each um, uh, publisher is supposed to complete a card and the card goes into the elders, and the elders compile the data. And I believe on a weekly basis, they send the data into a centralized location that makes its way back to the watchtower. Now, they don't report the data weekly, uh, which indicates that there is some... Uh, manipulation of the data. Um, for example, on uh, on this data table that we see here, this is annual data. So this is uh, the average number of publishers. So uh, that average number of publishers um, is an average over either 12 months of data or 52 weeks of data. I, I don't know which, uh, and they don't tell you which. Uh, so um, it's probably over uh, the weekly data, uh, weekly numbers, um, but I can't say. I, I don't have that information available to me. So uh, I have to take with, with what's been given, which was the annual uh, data. And, uh, but even so, you would expect a, a fair degree of variability in the data from one year to the next. You would not expect uh, when, when the data is totally random and collected from a, a very, you know, from a random 
uh, source, you would not expect that the data would be um, that the data would not be um, perfectly smooth. Uh, that there would be some element of uh, randomness in the data. Now, what I'm what I uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of the uh, analysis that I did. <clears throat> The best kind of analysis with this kind of data is to, to plot it. And the best kind of plot is a scatter plot. So a scatter plot will tell you a lot about the data and, and, and it will show you the variability. Okay? Now, for example, this, these uh, charts here. Um, they are quite interesting, actually. Now, these uh, are the number of baptisms. Now, this we go back to this data here. And the number of baptisms, uh, number of, of those baptized are in this column here. Now, you would think that there would be a correlation between the number of hours in the field and the number of Bible studies uh, that, that are com conducted uh, with the number that are baptized. Well, there's a very definite correlation between the number of hours in the field and the number of Bible studies conducted. And I'll show you that chart that's this chart right here. I'm enlarging it. Now, what do we see here? We see almost a perfectly straight line. Uh, I did a regression analysis on that, and I, I found that uh, the, there is what they call the correlation coefficient which tells you how tight the data is, um, how tightly that data fits a line. And uh, so if you run a best fit line, uh, and I'm not going to explain this. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry uh, for those that haven't had any statistical courses. Um, it just would take me too much time to, to explain uh, but uh, you can do something called a regression analysis, which would find the best fit through this data. Uh, you can see that this data practically forms a straight line. And um, this is the number of um, hours at the doorstep. Um, and this is the number of uh, Bible study hours. And uh, now you would expect that there would be a correlation between uh, the number of hours um, spent, you know, that the, the way the process works is that somebody comes to your door, uh, they knock on your door, and uh, they say, I'm preaching the good news of the gospel of the kingdom to you. And and they come back a couple of times, and then they say, are you interested in the Bible study? And you say, well, okay, yeah, I'll be interested in the Bible study. So you would expect that um, people in the field that are going door to door are going to elicit a number of Bible studies, and so that there would be a correlation that the more people... Uh, knocking on doors, um, the more there are knocking on doors, uh, the more uh, time will be spent in Bible studies. There will be more Bible studies initiated, and that's what this, this, uh, this um, line says that for the increase in the hours, and this is uh, 2 billion, 500 million hours uh, spent witnessing at the door, uh, leads to, um, you know, uh, 10 million hours in Bible studies. But this darn line is too smooth. You would not think 
that that many, that it would be that tight. This is highly suspect. You would expect, you would expect more scatter, like you see in these in the in these um, in these plots, that there would be more scatter. There would be an increase, but the data would be scattered around the best fit line. It wouldn't form such a straight line as you see here, and so that that. That tells me right off the bat that this is suspicious. And then when you look at the hours spent uh, preaching at the door, um, eliciting or, or, or causing to come into being um, Bible studies, you would think that those Bible studies would lead to baptisms. <clears throat> but that's not the case. And so that's what these charts are. So this does not correspond with these. And uh, again, this is, this is data that goes back from, to 1969 to 2017. And these charts uh, are pretty much the same, 1969 to 19, uh, 2017. Now, this is just the reported number of people baptized each year uh, from 1969 to 2017. Well, when you, when you, when you plot this against the number of hours spent knocking on the door, you can see that that there is uh, that there is a, 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 a lot of scatter um, between 1970 uh, or so, uh, 1969. Uh, oh, let's see. No, I am. I'm. Uh, apologize. Here, there's a little noise. Um, in the 60s and 70s, but from around 1978 to uh, to around 2000, uh, and that is 1997. So I would say around 1997, from 1978 to 1997, uh, you see a um, a corresponding increase in the number of hours. Um, and the number of people baptized. And you can see that it's not a perfectly straight line, that there's some scatter there, uh, that there's some uh, random element in there, but that's what you would expect to see. And then, um, and then uh, you would, um, uh, you, and, and it makes sense that, you know, the greater number of people knocking on doors uh, would yield to an increase in the number of people being baptized. Okay, so that makes sense. But then up here around 1997, it falls off and then flattens out. So no matter how much, no matter how much uh, knocking on the doors for the last 20 years, despite a substantial increase by uh, by over a uh, billion hours at the door, uh, knocking at the door, an increase. This this period here I'm showing uh, with the arrow uh, represents an increase of a billion hours knocking at the door, and it's flat. The same thing up here, this shows the number of hours of Bible study, so it shows that, um, that the, 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 the rate of um, people being baptized each year for the last 20 years is independent of the number of uh, hours spent in Bible studies um, or the number of hours spent knocking at the door. And and the and this represents a tremendous increase uh, of by a billion 
and a billion or over a billion hours uh, from here to here, and yet the number of baptisms is flat. <clears throat> so there's no correlation whatsoever. So this, um, this, which shows that there is a, um, a correlation of Bible studies, uh, that, that, that there is a very direct correlation, a very tight correlation between the number of Bible studies uh, being conducted and uh, correlating with the, the, uh, the knocking at the door work, uh, the, the service work, the number of hours, the billions of hours uh, put into service. But that from 19... Uh, 97 to 2017, uh, those, whether or not those Bible studies have increased, uh, it has not resulted in an increased rate at which people are being baptized. That has flattened out. Now, this makes the data suspect, especially this data here. Um, this looks like uh, people are giving the watchtower what they what what the watchtower expects because the watchtower expects individuals to put in a certain amount of time, and uh, they expect uh, individuals to put in a certain amount of time each week preaching and a certain amount of uh, Bible studies. Uh, so those expectations are there. So people. People themselves are trying to please the expectations of the governing body. Uh, so that's why you got this, this unbelievably smooth line. And you can't believe that. This data here uh, is more revealing. It shows that for the last 20 years uh, that, the, that the, the preaching work, the door-to-door -door preaching work, has been ineffective. And the um, interesting thing about that is that it seems that the Watchtower has already begun to realize that. And uh, they uh, have gone to other forms of witnessing, such as the carts. Um, but we'll never know how effective the carts are because um, maybe the last couple years here will reflect the carts. Uh, but uh, the numbers haven't uh, gone up and probably um, will continue to be that way uh, into the future. But we, we won't know that because um, Watchtower will not likely reveal this data uh, anymore. Um, now, another, Another uh, set, you can see I was busy. I was looking at um, uh, as much data as I could. Again, scatter plots um, give you the, the uh, best uh, means by which uh, you can suspect whether or not something is wrong with the data, uh, whether or not it's too smooth. Um, or whether or not uh, you, you can put a little bit of trust in the data. Um, this, this one is interesting because uh, I think the, the um, Watchtower is not as particular about this as, uh, as it is with uh, other data, especially growth data. But this is the uh, number of partakers in the emblems, okay? This, in other words, those that claim that they are um, uh, part of the anointed class. Now, this data goes back to the 1950s. This is 1957 over here. And there were 16,303 individuals out of 600,000 um, uh, there were 600,000 publishers at the time. Um, this is 16,000 um, uh, who took a, the uh, memorial, took the emblems in the memorial. And that was roughly 2.5% of all Jehovah's Witnesses. I did the calculation. And then over time, you saw a decline. 
and uh, the decline uh, tended to level out towards uh, 2000, uh, the 1990s, 2000, and into the 2000s, um, it, it tended to level off. And then suddenly around 2005, 2006, you see this sharp increase. And now uh, in 2017, there are 18,564 individuals that are partaking of the memorial. Now there are eight and a half million Jehovah's Witnesses uh, so the relative percentage is not the same as in 1957. Uh, it happens to be about 0.22% versus 2.5%. So it's an order of magnitude less. Nonetheless, the rate at which this is increasing is tremendous. And if it continues on this trajectory... Um, you will see that um, you will see that uh, this, this could become significant at some point in time in the near future. If it continues uh, for another decade or so, uh, we can have uh, you know, 50, 60,000 people uh, partaking of the memorial. Now, uh, this data, I, I tend to think is uh -oh. this is always bothered by telephone calls <clears throat> can't ever do this video without a telephone call so anyway uh there is a little bit of scatter in this data uh, but um it's what you would expect uh, as people die off. Uh, there were no new members or very few members that were coming and taking their places. Um, and, and it looked like it was going to drop off. And the belief was that by, by the time Armageddon came, there would be very few uh, left that uh, were of the anointed class. There would be some, but there would be a few left uh, to see Armageddon um, usher in the kingdom. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting uh, graph, interesting more for um, for Jehovah's Witnesses. Not that it's that tremendously significant, except that possibly they're on the cusp of changing their doctrines soon. Um, they will be um, maybe opening the, the doors more for people to partake of rather than calling them mentally diseased. Now, the other, the other graphs up here, uh, this is the number of memorial attendees per congregation. Um, and uh, it's interesting that uh, during the 1950s, uh, it was um, memorial attendance was uh, per congregation uh, was uh, 54 per congregation. And um, in 2016 or 17, it's 168. So you, you can see that the number of people um, uh, attending memorial has increased, but you can see that this thing is curving over and it's beginning to flatten out. Now, this is the number of uh, people attending memorial per average publisher. And you can see that, that this behavior is even more distinct than when you look at it per congregation. Uh, when you look at it in relationship to the average publisher, you can see that there is definitely a downward uh, curve. In other words, um, it, it, it almost appears, now I can't say for certain, uh, but uh, it appears from this graph that um, uh, people are becoming more aware of the bad reputation of uh, Watchtower. Now, uh, I understand that um, that uh, the um, 
way it, the way it goes is that uh, publishers, uh, because the memorial is the the most sacred time for both Bible students and for uh, Watchtower um, for Jehovah's Witnesses, um, that uh, they are uh, encouraged to invite uh, friends, family, other things that are people who are not Jehovah's Witnesses to come and uh, celebrate with them at their Kingdom Hall. Well, this tells that that maybe the optimistic numbers of growth, um, you know, right, there are eight and a half million publishers, and yet the number of of um, of people attending memorial per publisher is in decline. And that's at um, two point four six uh, people per publisher. Okay, so uh, that is um, the basically it's the number of um, attending memorial uh, per publisher, and you can see that the that in the past it was up as high as two point eight. Uh, 2.8, 2.8 uh, again, uh, and then it's beginning to decline, 2.46. Now, that can happen only if there are a fewer number of people attending the memorial. Now, the, the thing here that is possible is that the number of publishers is actually in decline and that the that the number of people uh, that attend per publisher um, is is relatively constant in reality and that the that the number of publishers is really um, in decline and not going up. In other words, that, that eight and a half million is, is a fabricated number. And that would then correspond for this, this curve down uh, because the number of um, people attending per publisher uh, would be a constant. That would seem likely to me. But on the other hand, it could be that people are just not interested in attending, and so there are fewer people coming who are invited to come. So those are the two possibilities uh, to explain this, this uh, down, downward turn. And it's a downward trajectory, and if it continues in that way, it's not good for Watchtower. And this one, I just wanted to plot the average uh, publisher per congregation. It seems that back in the late 1950s, um, there were, on average, uh, 40 publishers per congregation. And uh, that uh, went up substantially in the 60s and 70s. In 1975, you saw a decline, and then another steady decline, or incline, or increase, uh, up until 2017, where the average is now 69 uh, publishers per congregation. Now, I understand that Congregations are being closed, and um, the reason for that is that they don't have enough people to attend. So there's something wrong with this number, and also it's too too straight. Uh, look at this. Look at this data here. Um, let's try and drag that out so it's a little large. This is pretty smooth data here, and I now this data here. Uh, you, you, you can, uh, this is the 1975, um, 
what happened in the late 60s and the middle 70s. But then in the 80s and 90s, uh, the variability just disappeared. And uh, that makes this data a little suspect. Uh, it just doesn't seem right that that uh, the that curve is that smooth. Um, I don't believe that the the growth rate is really uh, that uh, that uh, that smooth. And and this is. Um, this is the uh, this is this is a, an important chart right here. This is the growth rate, the average publisher over time. Okay, so this axis, the x-axis, is uh, the year uh, 1969 to 2017. And this is the number of publishers in the millions. So this is the growth rate of publishers. And look how smooth that data is. I, I did a regression fit. I did several regression fits. And you can see here, uh, I don't know how well you can see, but I'm getting an R squared of 0.97. Um, uh, let's see, regression fit 0.987, regression fit 9.986, and another regression fit, which was 0.981. And this, the, 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 that is incredibly tight, incredibly tight. What the R squared tells you is that the variability um, is in in this data, and the variability is the change from year to year, is attributable to growth, exclusively to growth, and no other factors. And um, it's this is this is just too good. The data is just too good uh, to believe. I got another phone call, as you can see. Uh, I don't know who that is. And we'll turn that off. Don't know all of those numbers. So, unfortunately, the phone interrupts us again. Okay, so that... that that's incredible to, to get that. It, that tells me somebody's been fudging the data. And so what I did was I went out, I set out and, uh, to see if I can model that data. And so over here, I, this yellow set of columns, I started with 2000, one, uh, 1969. <clears throat> I added the number reported uh, of those who were baptized. I took the birth rate uh, and multiplied it against that and the death rate, uh, which isn't constant, but I just assumed for simplicity's sake it's, it's constant. It's, the death rate's actually gone down over, over the years. Uh, the universal or uh, death rate has gone down. The universal birth rate uh, has uh, has actually, I believe, um, uh, improved. There's there's fewer um, infant mortality uh, than there was, uh, you know, 50 years ago. Medicine's better. Um, and here I just uh, picked a number uh, that made the data fit. This would be the number of people leaving, okay, on an annual basis. Now, the birth rate I chose, now, I got this data from the, the some uh, World Health Organization um, statistics. Uh, 19 births per thousand people, 
uh, this is eight, eight represents eight deaths per uh, thousand people. And I, I heard that, that of all the born-ins, uh, only one-third remain. So I took that into account uh, on, the, on the birth rate so that only one-third of those born in uh, remain in the organization. And even then, you have a high number of people leaving. What I found incredible was that my model, which was, uh, which was um, based on uh, statistics that have been obtained uh, by um, uh, valid organizations, uh, birth rate, death rate, um, and uh, the reported number of baptisms uh, from, the, uh, from the watchtower, I was able to duplicate their data, uh, their growth data, to oh, uh, a, a substantial degree. Uh, here, I say, and I predict with my model in 2017 that 8,294,000 uh, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, according to this model that I created, and the, the uh, Watchtower data says there were 8,248,000. I mean... My goodness, the the level of agreement, uh, eight million two hundred ninety four versus eight million two hundred forty eight, uh, is is remarkable, and so um, I plotted it. I plotted the model uh, model prediction versus the reported number of uh, reported number of uh, of publishers uh, by watchtower and um, and that's what this uh, that's what this um, graph is and you can see that it's almost a perfect line the little glitch down here is uh, the 1975 debacle but uh, when you when you do a best fit line through this data, uh, it um, well you can see here's the uh, model right here. I, I plotted the model, and this is the actual. You can see that they they kind of follow each other very closely. Um, I did a uh, a best fit. Um, here I plotted the the model uh, versus the actual. On uh, so the x-axis is my model, and the uh, y-axis is the actual number. And I I get <laughs> interestingly enough uh, I get basically a forty-five degree angle here. Uh, that means a one-to-one -one relationship. And uh, you can see that that this um, this is uh, if you took the uh, if you took the ratio, uh, they it, it would be essentially one. And uh, you could see here, this is my model, and this is the actual. Uh, and I just put in R squareds here. Uh, the R squared for this data was 0.97. Uh, for my model, uh, the R squared it was uh, 0.99. That's if I uh, now the R squared uh, tells me how tightly these points uh, fit a line, a least squares best fit line, and um, it, it's just remarkable. Um, that I was able to model so closely 
look, I, I, this is the real data. You got a little jog there. I got a little jog on my model. You got a little dip there, a little bit of a dip here in the real data. And so I was able to, uh, I was able to duplicate uh, watchtowers, um, watchtowers uh, growth uh, with my uh, with my model. Now, uh, <laughs> uh, with uh, with um, the fact that um, we see here that the number of baptisms per year uh, are flattening out and are somewhere in the neighborhood of 260,000 a year. Um, that's uh, yeah, about 260,000 a year. I don't even have to, with my model, I could, uh, I could just, um, I could just add 260 and it would, um, it would give me a good prediction from, uh, from, uh, about 1997 on. So, um, anyway, the fact that I'm able to model it so closely makes this data suspect. The growth rate is uh, is suspect. The fact that I can I can develop a model that gets such close results. So there are several giveaways on this. The tightness of the data. Um, the, the how smooth it is, uh, how favorable it is to the organization. I mean, it shouldn't be that tight. Um, I shouldn't be able to, to model so closely. Um, and, you know, it just, uh, this, uh, this is very enlightening here that the number of baptisms is uh, really independent of the uh, amount of preaching that's going on. This is the third phone call. Okay. This is when I do have to call take... from Atlantic Spine. Hello? Okay, that's a that's my doctor calling me t on Saturday before New Year's Eve to remind me of my appointment on Tuesday. So, okay, so I think I got my point across. Um, I don't think you can trust the data on the Bible studies and the and the, the hours preaching uh, I think that that data is uh, fairly uh, artificial uh, people are giving the watchtower what watchtower expects uh, I think this data here uh, is is indeed real um, it, it does show that the number of baptized uh, each year uh, is really completely independent of the um, amount of work uh, that, that's being done by the, uh, by the publishers. And, uh, you know, there was an increase of, of a billion hours uh, more than a billion hours uh, at the doors, knocking at the doors, and yet uh, the number of uh, baptisms uh, remains flat for the last 20 years. So that that is a big thing. And I think that the the growth rate uh, that this this is, um, fabricated data. It just it really, the fact that I could model it, the fact that my model so closely um, mirrors uh, the data, and the fact that the data itself is so tight, uh, has a, an R squared of uh, 0.99. Uh, that is, if I put a best fit line, uh, for example, um, 
best fit uh, if I if I put a best fit line through the data, I would uh, I would find that it is a pretty close fit and. I'm just eyeballing this here, but that's that line is pretty darn close. Um, and <laughs> uh, it, it, it has an R squared of uh, 0 0.99. Um, when you do a regression fit, you can see that it does give you the best fit. This is uh, 0 0.97. Uh, the data that we were just looking at uh, was 0.99. There it is. This is it. Uh, this is the uh, this is the best fit line right there in yellow um, or orange, and the blue is the real data. And you can see how close that that line fits. And um, the, there's very little variability around the, around the data, uh, especially in the last 20 years or so. Um, you can see that it almost fits a perfect line. It's almost as if uh, somebody is uh, providing those numbers uh, from a model as opposed to uh, collecting real data. And so um, that's all I um, have to say on this. Um, there's just one more thing. Um, I think numbers uh, can be revealing. Um, and, you know, I think, this, uh, I think this information is damning information. Um, it, uh, you can see that I did a, a lot of work here. I did a lot of... Um, looking at different things, and I just graphed out, uh, plotted, uh, scatter plots, uh, the, the uh, data that I thought was uh, more enlightening uh, about the, uh, about the uh, society and, and what it's been reporting, how well it's doing. Uh, but um, the, the, other, the other thing is that uh, the, the, one of the big... Um, scandals for Watchtower today is the uh, the child sex abuse scandal, and uh, uh, that that is a, a very sad uh, situation uh, that um, Watchtower would um, rather adopt a policy and keep a policy that would protect and protect uh, pedophiles um, <clears throat> and. Um, and, and not protect children. Uh, their priority is not to, is not to protect uh, children uh, at all. Um, and to show the, uh, show the significance of it, again, here's some, here's some uh, information. I'm just uh, going to move this over a little bit so that you can see it. Now, hopefully you can see this uh, fairly well. I have made it a larger font. Now, this is the number, uh, the latest number of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses um, uh, in the United States uh, in 2016. Now, they, in the Jose Lopez trial, uh, they there there was a uh, list uh, that was um, the court was made aware of a list that the Watchtower keeps of the uh, number of pedophiles uh, that it has within its organization, uh, and and it it keep it kept uh, names locations and uh, and who knows what other information you know maybe uh, which children. Uh, maybe uh, how many children uh, each uh, pedophile um, uh, may have may have uh, hurt, uh, but uh, this list uh, and I looked up online yesterday uh, is allegedly 
uh, contains 23,720 names. Um, now, when, when you go to the statistics, um, in society, in general, uh, they say uh, the, the, the best information that I could find is that um, once, you know, some sites said uh, 3% of the population uh, are pedophiles. Uh, another site said between 1% and 5% are pedophiles. And if you take uh, that level, okay, anywhere between 1% and 5%, and apply that against the 1,198,000 uh, uh, witnesses in the United States, uh, you get, oh darn it, I made this too, I, sometimes I, I'm getting used to this, um, to this, uh, computer. Okay, um, what that indicates, at 1%, uh, there would be 11,000, almost 12,000 pedophiles in the Watchtower Society in the United States. Um, at 2%, uh, 23,961. Uh, that is almost exactly the number that is on the list uh, that the Watchtower, uh, this is the uh, Watchtower list. Um, this is the Watchtower list of pedophiles that it, it's protecting this list and um, they, they're paying a um, uh, $4,000 a day. $4,000 a day. Whoops, I screwed up. $4,000 per day. Fine for not turning in that list. That is, uh, that was the fine uh, because they were subpoenaed, Watchtower was subpoenaed to provide that list to the court and uh, they, they, they did not provide the list and so they were charged with contempt of court and uh, fined $4,000 per day of violation. Uh, now it's been roughly two years um, the number of uh, that the fine is up to is it's over. It's greater than two million dollars currently. So they've accrued uh, at this rate a, a a fine of over two million dollars. Now this this uh, this fine is substantial. It's it's a big fine. Uh, but I understand that they, they, rather than turn over the list and pay the fine, they also defaulted a $13 million judgment in the Jose Lopez case um, because um, there were for two things, because um, uh, Garrett Loesch would not appear uh, in court and because they would not turn over the list. And so the court uh, was uh, penalizing Watchtower for this. <clears throat> and so they penalized them in this judgment, the $13 million. And as far as I understand, that has not changed. Uh, so that, that is still the same. I, I don't know if Watchtower appealed that, but I do know that the Watchtower did appeal this $2 million um, that is accruing and, and it's currently accruing. If you go to um, JW Survey website, uh, they have a counter, or at least they had a counter. I don't know if they still have it, but um, they probably do. Uh, that shows how much uh, of that, that fine has accrued um, since, since the uh, initiation of that fine. Now, uh, getting back 
to the numbers here, um, the, I doubt, I doubt, you know, the one percent uh, because they already have a list of seven hundred and twenty or three twenty three thousand seven hundred and twenty. Uh, so this, uh, I think we can, you know, disregard um, as, as understating the matter uh, in Watchtowers. So at best, Watchtower um, has tallied up all of the pedophiles uh, in, in, uh, and it's in you know in the Watchtower in the Jehovah's Witnesses um, that they've that they've got a tally of every pedophile. I doubt that's true because um, I, I just don't think that they have that. Who's going to volunteer that information, uh, especially a pedophile that has not been caught yet? So this number here. Uh, 23,720 represents 2% of the, of the number of, uh, of um, publishers in the United States. 2%. Okay, 2% of the Jehovah's Witnesses um, are on that list of pedophiles. That is a substantial number, and that you see here, 99%, that's roughly 100%. Now, if it was 3%, which is what I, a number of websites suggested, that 3% of the population are pedophiles, then this 23,720 underreports, underreports, it only captures 66, their list here only captures 66% of, the, of the, uh, the actual number of pedophiles. And that seems to be more likely because who are they going to have on the list but the ones that, that have acknowledged uh, that, they, that they've done something, ones that they, they know about that have been, that have... Uh, confessed or have been caught or have been alleged uh, to have uh, uh, committed um, child sexual abuse. Uh, at 4%, they've only captured 49%, and uh, now 5% was the top um, that I found that in society uh, that five, you know, it ranges between one and five percent uh, of society are pedophiles. Uh, so uh, that means that this list, highlighted in yellow, uh, captures only thirty-nine or eh, roughly forty percent. Only forty percent of the actual number of pedophiles in the Watchtower. Now, if that is the case, now let's 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 look at it from the from the uh, this perspective, the three percent case. Let's say they they get, they get judgment. Um, okay, they the watchtowers they they don't want to turn over this list. Um, it it really is damning to them. So they're going to want to settle. And let's say they, they, they settle. And many, you know, because witnesses are, are likely not to have much of an education, uh, and their earnings are not going to be all that, that great as a result of that, um, it, I believe Watchtower can entice um, individuals uh, with a, a lower settlement than, than what people could get. And um, so even though there have been some cases that, that have been lost, uh, currently there's a $66 million class action lawsuit uh, against Watchtower in Canada. Um, if, 
if Watchtower in the United States settles, uh, let's say, 36,000 cases, which is 3%, 36,000 cases, all right, at um, 100,000 a case, okay, so let's, um, I like to make sure that I have my uh, format cells. I like to, I like to have the um, separator there, okay. Now let's say this is a hundred thousand dollars, U.S. dollars, U.S.D., okay. That would mean if they had to settle this many cases at $100,000 a case, and that's lowballing it, they got $3,600,000,000 that they have to that they have to pay out in judgment for 36,000 cases at $100,000. Now, they've been losing these cases with judgments in the area of millions. So let's say Watchtower gets lucky and they only settle half uh, the, uh, the the cases that they have on their list. Okay, so it's equal to that by two. Okay, let's say per adventure, and that on average they lose uh, two million dollars. Okay. That would be, and let's uh, let's get these formatted the way I like them. Cells number zero zero. Okay, that would equal this. Sorry, that would equal this by this. That would be an astounding $23,720,000,000. Million, million. $24 billion. That would be half the cases on this list of 23,000 at $2 million a case. Now, this scenario is settling the more likely 3% of cases uh, at $100,000 a case. Even so, we're talking $3 billion. And if we half that, let's say the, the, the number uh, was uh, 18,000 that they settled, that's still at, at, that is half of this. Whoops, I did a stupid thing. I'm getting tired. Okay, equals this by two. That's still almost $2 billion alone that they would settle. If they settled 18,000, that would be uh, for 18,000 uh, cases. And 18,000 is substantially lower than the 23,000 in their, in their list. This thing has the potential to completely and totally bankrupt Watchtower in the absolute, let's look at the absolute worst scenario, okay? Let's say, now again, this is just 
the potential. This is why I think Watchtower is becoming less and less transparent um, in all respects because they don't want anybody knowing how much money they've got and uh, what potential they have and what they know uh, in any regard. But let's say it is 23720 Okay, that they, whoops, that they, that they have to settle with, okay? And they settle at $2 million a case, which is not unreasonable. Then the, the amount. would be a staggering, oh, not even enough room in that cell to fit the number, $47 billion, almost $48 billion, 47. And if it was, if they, if they, if they had to do the 36,000, which is 3%, that's seventy-two million. Now, if these thirty-six thousand uh, committed, uh, let's say, three offenses each, um, you can take uh, <laughs> this number and uh, multiply that by three, and uh, you've got yourself a huge, huge number. That's uh, 200, well, let's uh, format that. That's $216 billion or $0.2 trillion. Um, let's uh, get the number. That's uh, $216 billion or $0.2 trillion. If there were multiple cases let's say three, each of the 36,000 uh, committed three uh, cases or, or uh, circumstances, and, and each cost them $2 million to settle on uh, in court. Um, it, this thing has the potential of running up to hundreds of billions of dollars and no matter how much money and how tax-free Watchtower has been over the years, uh, there's no way that Watchtower can, could afford something like that. They're sitting on a powder keg. They're ready to, to blow. And so um, this is, uh, you know, just a a little what-if analysis to kind of frame it in our minds of what, what Watchtower is looking at. I mean, if I were sitting in that boardroom and I was discussing this situation with my legal team and with consultants and with, uh, with uh, other individuals uh, um, that uh, would, uh, I would hire to help me out in dealing with this situation, um, then then this is the kind of stuff that we're looking at. They they want to look at the the worst case. Uh, they want to look at the uh, um, most probable case, and uh, they want to look at the uh, least uh, situation, the least harmful. And um, in looking at this. Uh, the least, the least uh, harmful um, is still roughly. Uh, it's it's in the neighborhood of about uh, one point eight billion dollars. Uh, that that is a, a mind-boggling amount of money, and and the the worst case scenario is just. Uh, out there so far, it, you might as well just close 
uh, watchtower stores uh, because they don't have that kind of money. No matter how much uh, uh, tax exemption and uh, and other things. So I think this is the reason why we've seen the the printing go down. Uh, I think that this is why we've seen um, uh, the amount of uh, service work uh, all around go down. Even on JW Broadcasting, it is going down. This this um, uh, list uh, of 23,720 individuals in the Australian Commission, the lawsuits, the... Um, the uh, English uh, Charity Commission, all of this, this is, this is a, a financial nightmare for a watchtower. And uh, they, they don't want to, to give it away, uh, but they're, um, they're, they're, they're closing in. They're, they're tightening ranks. They're, they're, they're circling the wagons. Uh, they're really in a, in a, in a, total defense situation um, and uh, they're they're trying to um, save as much money as possible from leaving the organization uh, because they are indeed uh, looking at um, they're, they're, they're sitting on a hydrogen bomb that that uh, has a timer that's going off and they don't know what to do uh, to, uh, to, to prevent that from, from happening. Um, don't know how big the blast is going to be, but that blast is going to be devastating no matter what. Now, maybe Watchtower will survive it, but there's a possibility that Watchtower might not survive, uh, the, um, this, uh, circumstance, this situation, and uh, they they'll have to to close their doors, uh, which uh, which would uh, be an interesting uh, thing because um, if they uh, then declare bankruptcy, uh, then uh, all of the financials would have to be disclosed because uh, they would be either taken into a receivership. Uh, to to guide them out, or they would just have to close up altogether and just uh, all of their assets uh, then uh, become distributed uh, to the, um, they liquidate the assets and then distribute the, uh, the, uh, the uh, assets to uh, those uh, victims uh, that um, Watchtower is right now covering up and protecting. And this 23,000, mind you, uh, is just in the U.S. alone. If we uh, take 8 million, um, what, is, what is our number here? 8 million, uh, 249,000, uh, okay? 8 million, 249,000, 8 million, Two, four, nine, one, two, three. Um, uh, I did something wrong there, didn't I? Um, Eight million two hundred forty-nine thousand, and I'm going to format this so that I can. Uh, darn it! Sorry. Uh, I'm a stickler about uh, separators, comma, commas. Okay, that's eight million. Okay, now three percent of eight million. Okay, um, I'm going to fix this so that we can see the. Uh, there we go. Three percent. Okay, that means globally, on, in the middle. Now, again, it could be between 1 and 5%. I'm taking the middle. 3% is equal to this times this. That's 247,000 pedophiles around the world.
globally. 247, or you could round it up to 250. That's a quarter million pedophiles in the Watchtower Society. Okay, this list here is only in the, in the United States. Uh, and the United States is only about one-eighth of, um, of the total number. So let's see if um, see if that makes some sense. Okay, one hundred and eighty nine. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, this this is about right. Two hundred and forty thousand. If it was two percent, uh, it's still it's one hundred and sixty five thousand. 165,000 pedophiles, if it's 2%. Uh, but the information, like I said, is uh, 3% was the, the most probable number. And if they have to settle with that much, uh, let's say $100,000, okay, that would mean that they would have to pay <laughs> $25 billion globally, 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 globally. This is a conservative, conservative number, conservative. If this thing was two hundred, if this thing was two million, we're talking about five hundred billion dollars. Five hundred billion dollars. Okay. So, now, I don't know what the Catholic Church had to pay. I never really paid as close attention to it uh, as I have been with this uh, circumstance with the uh, Watchtower. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't know. You know, there are a billion Catholics. The Catholic Church has been around for 2,000 years. They own, you know, they in terms of property, they make um, the Watchtower look like um, um, pipsqueaks. Um, <clears throat> the Catholic Church has so much locked up in assets uh, and uh, and so much money uh, that they could uh, they could survive um, something of this magnitude. I mean, it, it it would hurt them, and it would hurt them. And and the Catholic Church has been hurt tremendously. Who knows if they'll ever really fully recover from the 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 um, child abuse uh, scandal that they suffered. And still are suffering, uh, but um, Watchtower cannot cannot afford anything like this. And I, look, these numbers are not unreal. They're not unreal. We've seen some settlements. Um, there was one settlement for $23 million. That thing got knocked down substantially uh, on an appeal to, I believe it was $2 or $3 million. Um, and then there was Louis Lopez that, that had $13 million, And I don't think that one was knocked down. Uh, they can't afford to be losing these numbers of cases. And again, if they settle... Uh, for a hundred thousand dollars, and there are two hundred and forty-seven thousand people around the world they have to settle with. That is twenty-five billion dollars. 
There is no way that Watchtower can survive that. They are just, no matter how big they are, no matter how much money they have accrued over the years, uh, tax free, uh, that is a staggering amount of money that they they are potentially ready to pay. This is this is a hydrogen bomb that's ticking that they are sitting on. So anyway, I just think you see numbers can frame. Numbers can give you insight into things. And um, it's kind of fun to do these mental exercises to see what the potential is. Again, these are just potentials. And this is what the, the governing body is sitting around the table talking about. They're not talking about much of anything else right now except how do we survive this scandal? And, you know, who, whoever is giving them advice is, is really screwing them over because they're not backing down. They're not giving this list over, this damning list. Uh, they're not giving. Uh, they're not giving up their two witness rule, which is utterly ridiculous. Uh, they really should call it the two witless rule. I mean, the two witness rule is is ludicrous. And uh, I think I think that uh, Watchtower and whoever is giving them advice is. Um, is really, really taking the wrong uh, course of action, and it's going to come back, and it's going to bite them pretty hard. And it should. It should. Because, number one, they have the responsibility for taking care of the people who call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses, their followers. They, that is their number one priority, especially the children, especially the children. So anyway, I, I've gone on a bit, and um, I um, apologize if you guys uh, don't care for numbers. I think that they can be revealing. I have fun with it. Uh, this was a uh, this was a, a bit longer than I wanted to make, uh, but I thought it revealed some interesting potentials, uh, some in, interesting insight uh, that into the organization, insight that is now now going to be terminated uh, because 2017 is the last year uh, we'll likely see any any. Uh, statistics from the Watchtower. Uh, I'd love to see the statistics continue uh, so that we could see how, how well the organization really is faring in the future, but uh, I doubt they're going to. If they, if they do publish any information, it's going to be very limited and very controlled, even more so than what they've done in the past. Um, there's nothing to brag about anymore, and so uh, I think they're going to. Uh, they're they're not a transparent organization at all, and they're becoming less so uh, all the time. So this is um, the truth seeker, atheist. Um, wishing you all well.